So earlier this year, Samsung launched the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360, and then I went to an event where they launched the Galaxy Book 4 Edge with the new Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite chipset. And now they've launched the Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360 with Intel's Lunar Lake platform. And we're going to see in this video which one you should buy because everybody is gonna be hyping this or that or that or this. And I'm just gonna give you objective data to help you make the right purchasing decision because I am not a hype train kind of guy. So we're gonna look at Book 4, Book 5 Pro 360 and the Book 4 Edge, checking battery life and performance to see which one is right for you. Now, if you're somebody who's curious about like my thoughts on the build quality and usability, I have full reviews of the Book 4, which is the same chassis that this thing has been. So they just, it's got a new chipset. Watch that video if you want my thoughts on the build quality. This is more about bang to buck, value for the device and the performance and expectations you can expect out of them. This video is brought to you by Asus ProArt Laptops, the laptops built from the ground up for creators. More information to come later in the video. First and foremost, let's go ahead and talk about some of the differences between the Edge and the Book Pro 360. Now, what you have is you have a laptop with the Pro 360 that is pen compatible and it's a touch screen and it goes full two in one. Okay, so that's the big difference with the Pro 360. Now the Edge, it is a touch screen. It does have a large trackpad, but it is not pen compatible. So just keep that in mind. If you're wondering like value proposition between these two devices, they are like doppelganger devices. Um, they have a tiny bit of difference in like the design of like the fin. You know, they have more of this fin design on the Edge versus kind of more of the standard laptop design on the Pro 360. And so those are some, some differences between the two. Didn't have the bottom cover all the way back on for that. That's why that popped. Um, now looking also at the upgrade path for the Pro 360, you can swap the storage. It is upgradable. For the Edge, uh, I'm trying to see, can you upgrade the storage? No, the Galaxy Book for Edge, you cannot upgrade the storage. So both have RAM solder to the motherboard, the Book 4 and the Book 5 Pro 360, you can upgrade one M.2 slot, that is the boot drive. So just keep that in mind, and of course, pen compatibility. Now, let's talk about the battery life. That's one area that Lunar Lake, Lunar Lake, and um, the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite are really duking it out. And according to my tests, uh, I'm seeing a battery life result on the Qualcomm 16 inch model of 19 hours and 47 minutes for passport productivity and about 20 hours of streaming video playback. Now for the Samsung Galaxy Book 5 with Lunar Lake, you can expect 18 hours and 56 minutes of battery life in, for passport productivity and 19 hours and 21 minutes for streaming video playback. Now looking at the generation prior, the Book for Pro 360, this had the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H, and it had 14 hours and 42 minutes of passport productivity battery life and 16 hours and seven minutes of streaming video playback. So we do have a bit of an upgrade in regards to battery life for Lunar Lake. Okay, I might stop, it's annoying me now. <laughs> I just don't like hype, it drives me crazy. Okay, so we're seeing improved battery lives for sure. The Edge with the Qualcomm ARM chip, it's a more efficient CPU, so you're definitely gonna have better battery life. However, the big struggle with jumping on the Qualcomm train, jumping on the ARM train, is that applications are not coming out as fast as most people probably hoped, and so things like video editing are struggling um, because you're running everything through an emulation. This video is brought to you by the ASUS ProR P16, the flagship creator laptop from ASUS that provides on-the-go workstation performance within a beautiful and durable military-tested all-aluminum chassis, outfitted with a pen-compatible 4K OLED Corning glass display that is durable and color accurate. It weighs four pounds and is just over a half an inch thick, capable of all-day battery life for productivity tasks, and fitted with the ASUS dial to stream Line your workflow, providing access to your most commonly used tools. Equipped with the AMD Ryzen AI9 CPU, up to 64 gigs of RAM, and an RTX 4060 or 4070, this device is a powerhouse for architecture and 3D modeling work. And trust me, this is just the tip of the iceberg when looking at what the ASUS ProArt P16 has to offer. Check out my full review content within the playlist linked in the YouTube cards above or in the description below. Thank you so much to ASUS ProArt for sponsoring this part of 
of the video. Now, let's go ahead and check out the benchmarks between these different devices. So I'm gonna go ahead and look at the Photoshop benchmark. This is a real world benchmark that I run from Puget Systems. And you can see that we have the Galaxy Book 5 at a 6,560. We have the Galaxy Book 4 Pro 360 at a 4,775. Okay, so we saw a big jump in performance for Lunar Lake going from the Book 4 to the Book 5. Now, looking at the Edge, the Photoshop benchmark for the Edge is going to be 6,045. So you're definitely gonna kind of tear your way up. So the Book 4 is the lowest performance. It had 16 gigs of RAM. In my opinion, it was under-equipped uh, in regards to RAM, whereas the Qualcomm has 16 gigs of RAM as well, but the ARM chip was more efficient, gave you a little bit better performance, steps you up to about that 6,000 point range in Photoshop. And then as you move towards 32 gigs of RAM and Lunar Lake, you're gonna be at that 6,560 inside of the Photoshop benchmark. So the best performer and quality battery life right now is looking at the new Lunar Lake Galaxy Book 5 Pro 360. Now let's go ahead and look at video editing. For video editing, it's gonna hands down go to the latest Lunar Lake. The reason being is we're still running that x86 emulation for the Premiere Pro Adobe application, four minutes and 34 seconds versus four minutes and 28 seconds. So really the most advantage you're gonna get from going from book four to book five is more better multitasking with 32 gigs of RAM and you're gonna have better battery life. Now looking at the edge, I'm gonna go back over, look at the edge export time, 12 minutes and 11 seconds, 16 inch export time. Reason being is it's going through the emulation. So we do not have ARM-based native applications yet for Premiere Pro. And so for me, my hat goes off to the Book 5 for giving us 32 gigs of RAM, better battery life, and slightly better performance for something like Premiere Pro. And you have pen functionality. So where I sit, I'm not quite sold on Qualcomm because Lunar Lake has come out and we have great efficiency and battery life, which in my opinion, we should have saw about a year or two ago, but you know, they, were, they move at their own pace. Um, I just saw that, you know, with Mac doing such a great battery life, why couldn't have Intel responded sooner? That would have made themselves more relevant over the past two or three years, but now we're seeing really good relevancy. We're seeing a really solid dogfight between the Apple Silicon, Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD. So this is a really good time to be a consumer. Heading through 2024 into 2025, I think we're gonna see an uptick in opportunity for some really great devices that are thin, light, battery life, and powerful. Remember, links are in the description. If you wanna make a purchase of any of these devices, if I helped you convince you on any sort of purchasing decision, I'm always honored to be able to get your purchase as this channel exists to help you make a qualified buying decision. And so by purchasing through the links, helps out my channel, keeps it alive, a little bit of a commission to me, but at no extra cost to you. If you want to click or tap the screen here for more videos to help with your buying decision, I'd be happy to see you in the next one.